Welcome to Morris Media's instructional program on DOS. This is a program in a series of programs designed to teach you how to use some of the most popular software for the IBM computer. All of our tapes have the exclusive Morris code indexing system. With this system, you can easily find any section of the tape quickly by looking for the white circle in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. The number in the circle will tell you where you are on the tape. Then just fast forward or rewind to the spot that you are looking for. Here are the index listings for this videotape. And we'll be telling you about DOS, what it is, and how it works. We'll show you how to use DOS as a tool to accomplish many of the basic day-to-day -day computer tasks you need to perform, and you'll learn to keep your computer organized to improve your productivity. DOS is the software that creates the platform for other programs to run under. DOS stands for Disk Operating System. The DOS we will be explaining is for computers that are IBM compatible. They all use DOS as an operating system, and although they may be made by many different companies, because they all use DOS, they all use the same commands. Now, DOS is basically in charge of your computer. Each time we want to accomplish a task, we ask DOS to tell the computer what we want. Even other programs that we use usually ask DOS to perform tasks for them. Now, we believe it's important to understand how DOS works and what it can accomplish. There are, however, some software products which many people have found useful in dealing with DOS. These tools are sometimes called shells. Each, however, puts itself between you and DOS to help you to remember and execute DOS commands. The most recently introduced interface is called Windows version 3.0 from Microsoft, the same people who wrote DOS. It belongs to one of the two major divisions of this type of software. It is a Graphical User Interface, or GUI. You accomplish tasks with GUIs by selecting from the little pictures that are shown on the screen called icons. Each icon represents a program that can be run or a function to be performed. The other major division of interfaces fall into the text-based interface. You are again offered choices on the screen, but this time in the form of words and titles. Selecting the name of your favorite program will cause it to execute. These interfaces usually make it easier for a new user to learn their system, but they are not without their drawbacks. As you become more familiar with DOS and no longer need the help these programs provide, then they represent an obstacle to increased speed. The graphical interfaces particularly require greater computer resource and run slower than their text-based peers. The more advanced interfaces offer the capability of executing more than one program at a time and of switching data between application programs. Neither of these features are offered by DOS, but again, there is a catch. Many popular programs are not currently written to work with these interfaces. So we recommend that before you put another program between you and DOS, you should learn how DOS works. And that is the purpose of this tape. When we mention DOS, what we are talking about is called MS-DOS, which was written by Microsoft, and PC-DOS, which was also written by Microsoft for IBM. For our purposes, they can be considered identical. Let's talk about the capital letter and the little blinking light on the screen that appears when you first start your computer. Remember, we are assuming that you are not using a menu, interface, or shell, but instead are dealing directly with DOS. The C colon bracket is called the DOS prompt. It is possible to have other information displayed in the prompt, but most prompts contain at least this information. DOS has assigned letters, followed by a colon, to represent each of the disk drives on the computer. The letter A colon stands for the first floppy disk drive. If you have a second floppy, it is drive B. The hard disk is usually drive C. When your computer displays the C colon, that means the hard disk, which is drive C, is the disk drive currently in use. The blinking light, called the cursor, 
tells you that it is your turn to type. DOS is waiting for you to say something. We have two kinds of commands we can give DOS. The first type is called an internal command. That means it is in memory. DOS already knows how to operate with that particular command when you type it. The second type of command is called an external command. The external command is one where DOS has to find the program on the disk necessary to execute the function. First, we're going to work with some of the internal commands. We can type this type of command anytime we see the DOS prompt anywhere on the computer, and the DOS program will know how to execute the command. The first command we're going to try is the date command. We want to be sure that the computer knows the correct date and time because they are used to record when files were created or last changed. Let's type in the word date. Just press the letters D-A-T-E. DOS does not care whether commands are typed in capital or lowercase letters. All of its responses to our commands will appear on the screen in uppercase. The computer does not yet see this or other commands until you press the Enter key. DOS is waiting for you to tell it to go forward with the command. The Enter key may have its name appear on the key, or it may only have a bent arrow pointing to the left. It all depends on what kind of keyboard you have. Now press Enter. The computer displays on the screen what it thinks the current date is. For some computers, it may be 01-01-1980. For others, it may be the last date we set. If we want to set a new date, we type in, in this case, the month, a hyphen, the day, a hyphen, and the year and numbers. Let's try doing it. For instance, type 06-09-90. You don't have to worry about the days of the week. DOS has a built-in function that tells it the day of the week based on the calendar date. Once again, the computer hasn't seen anything until you press the Enter key. So press Enter. It might look like nothing happened, but the computer has read that information and stored it. Every time DOS needs the information, it will be available. DOS doesn't display any messages on the screen to tell you that you were successful. As we go through these commands, normally the cursor and the little prompt move down the screen. Rather than confuse you with multiple commands on the screen at the same time, we're going to type a command that clears the screen off between each one of these commands we're learning today. The command to clear the screen is called clear screen. It's abbreviated as CLS. So just type the letters CLS and hit the return key. This clears off the date command or any other command. It's not necessary to type CLS after each command, but we suggest that you do it during this tape, as we will, to make the screen easy to read and avoid confusion. We've set the date, so now let's set the time. Just type in the word time and hit the return key. DOS responds by displaying what it believes the current time to be in a 24-hour military format. When we set the time, we will need to remember to add 12 to the hour. If it is 6.30 p.m., you would add 6 plus 12, which makes 18, so we would type 18 colon 30. Use the shift key to type the colon. When DOS displays the time, it actually shows you hours, minutes, seconds, and hundredths of seconds. But it isn't necessary to fill out those last two. Many people who have an older version of DOS will eventually want to switch to the newest version because the newer versions of their other software requires it. There is a newer version of DOS greater than 3.3. It's called 4.01. It requires more memory. You will find it on some of the newer computers. For all normal business applications, version 3.0 has all the functions that you need. 
The people that sell you your computer usually sell you the latest version of DOS along with it. But be careful when trying to replace your current version of DOS with a newer version on your computer. It's more involved than just copying that new software version of DOS onto your machine. To use DOS, we need to understand three basic questions. They are, where are we? What programs are available here? And what files are here with me? In our example, we're on the C drive, which is the hard disk. You see the C colon as part of the prompt on the screen. If we were on the A drive, it would be A colon. We want to see what is here with us. In order to do that, we type a command called directory. It's abbreviated DIR. Try typing DIR and then press enter. The directory shows files on the screen. Files are the form that information takes when it is stored on a disk drive. The directory command shows us three types of things, program files, data files, and the names of other directories. Each file has a name that is eight letters or less and is usually followed by a three-letter extension. This last part of the file name, the extension, tells us something about the nature of that file. If you type the name of that file, omitting the extension, it will run the program immediately. Beside each file in the directory is displayed the amount of space it occupies on the hard disk in bytes and the date and time it was created or last modified. In addition, the amount of space available on the hard disk for other files is displayed at the bottom of the directory listing. Besides date and program files, we also see items which have the letters DIR to their right. Directories are like separate filing cabinets on the hard disk. When we see the extension DIR, we're actually seeing the front of these filing cabinets. In our example, we have the cabinet labeled 4 one called system, one called tax, and one called utility. We can't see what's inside the cabinet. We can only see the front. There is a reason for making these separate electronic cabinets. Most hard disks can hold at least 20 million characters. If all the files were in one huge room, they would slow DOS down when looking for a particular file. Furthermore, there is a DOS rule that prohibits two files with the same name from being in the same directory. For instance, suppose you had a file called June. It is payroll information and you give it the extension DAT to remind you that it is data. Suppose someone else has a file with the same name. When the second person saves his file, he will destroy your file if it was in the same directory. It's a good idea to make a separate room or directory for program files that will separate them from the data files. Because programs do not change as often as data files, you will find it easier to back up selected portions of your hard disk with this type of division. Each user should also have a separate room for their data files to separate them from other users' data files. The command to make a directory is make directory. Just enter md, a space, and the name you want. In this case, we'll call our new directory George. You should type md space George and press enter. Now let's clear the screen with CLS and enter. We've told DOS to create a directory called George. By the way, the date and time that this directory was created appears beside its name. To see what is inside these directories, we can go inside and look or remain where we are and ask DOS to look for us. Let's clear the screen off again with CLS and enter. To go inside the room, we will use the change directory command abbreviated CD. Type CD space and then the name of the directory you want to go into. In this case, it is George. So type George and press enter. You will notice that the prompt 
has changed. It is telling us that we're not just on dry C anymore, which is the hard disk, but we're in a directory called George that is on the drive C. We have customized our prompts to provide this extra information. Not all computers are set up to show what directory you are currently in. Now to look around, we will use our directory command. So type dir and press enter. We will keep using the directory command every time we want to look around. The directory says, this is a directory of hard disk C and a subdirectory called George. It shows us two directories, which are in our George directory or our subdirectory to George. When you make a directory, the operating system makes these two subdirectories. One is marked with a dot and one with two dots. That is how DOS keeps track of what directories are above this directory and what are below this directory. We don't get involved with those two kinds of special directories. Right now, we have a brand new directory that, for our purpose, is empty. Remember the command we used when we wanted to go to another directory? That command was change directory. So to return to the top most directory from which we came, we type cd space backslash and hit return. Sometimes you can get away without typing a space, but other commands require it. So it's a good practice to put the space between the DOS command and the object of the command. CD is the command. We are going to tell the computer where we want to go. The first backslash in a command tells DOS that our path starts at the top of the root directory. Sometimes a directory contains more information than you can view easily. We'll show you a command that will let you view a huge directory a page at a time. First, we'll show you what happens without the special option of the directory command. To see the contents of a directory other than the one we are currently in, we need to tell DOS where to look. Type D-I-R space backslash utility and press enter. The backslash tells DOS that the path to the directory starts at the top or root directory, which happens to be where we are, and proceeds to the directory called utility. Remember, we are not moving. We are asking DOS to go look at the directory called utility and tell us about its content. The files scroll by quickly, making it very hard to read, much less remember which one passed by. Now clear the screen with CLS and press enter. And now we're going to look at an option of the DIR command. This time type DIR space backslash utility space forward slash P and press enter. The letter P stands for page. The directory again scrolls by, but this time it stops when the screen is full. Just press any key when you want to go to the next screen or page. There is another option to the directory command, which will allow us to see more file names at once. Type dir space backslash utility space forward slash w and press enter. The letter W stands for wide. We now see several columns of file names and extensions, but we had to sacrifice the size, date, and time information to display so many on the screen at once. The W stands for wide, and you will notice that we can see many more file names at the same time. You can try combining the P and W options by yourself. We've been working with the hard disk. Suppose we want to copy a file from the hard disk to a floppy disk to give to someone else. Floppy disks are usually the medium of transferring information between computers. We need to get a floppy disk ready for this information. When we get a new floppy disk from the box, it's not ready for use yet. It has to be pre-processed or formatted. 
So the first step we need to do is to format the floppy disk. What that does is write out 40 circular tracks of information on the disk. In addition to electronically writing these blank tracks, DOS will put a small, empty table of contents on the disk where file names can be stored. When you get a new box of floppy disks, format them all at once. Then put a plain label on them to remind yourself that they have been formatted. The disk should be put in the disk drive with the label facing you. Notice that the right protect slot is to the left. We will stick the disk in the top disk drive. Lots of disk drives have a little switch on the front that has to be put up or open to allow you to insert the disk. You can push the disk in and feel it go against a stop. Then turn the little switch down. That locks the disk in place. Now DOS makes certain assumptions when you aren't very explicit in your instructions. If you tell DOS a command and don't tell it where you want the command to take place, it will assume it's where you are right now. Right now, we're on drive C, the hard disk. Be extremely careful here because if we type the word format and hit the enter key to tell DOS to proceed, some versions of DOS will proceed to write over all the program and data on your hard disk. You have to remember when you type the format command to be very specific. You must tell DOS the specific disk drive on which formatting will occur. In this case, it is drive A. This command is further complicated by the fact that it is an external command. Remember that external commands are programs which are stored on the hard disk and are not always available in the computer's memory. Since it is not in memory and not in our current directory, we need to tell DOS where to find the format program file. Most hard disks have a separate directory for DOS commands, which is right below the root directory. We will assume that is the case here. So type C colon backslash DOS backslash format space A colon and hit return. DOS will display a message on the screen which tells you to insert a new diskette for drive A and strike the enter key when ready. Since we have a disk in there already, just press enter. Formatting is basically checking the media to be sure it can be written on. If there is a bad area on the disk, it will mark that area so the computer will know not to put any information there. Floppy disks are an inexpensive item, so it is a good idea to throw them away if you find any bad spots. If you've had one bad spot on a new disk, then the probability of having another bad spot developing on that particular disk is much higher. Why risk losing two or three hundred dollars worth of data to a bad spot on a 50 cent disk? If the disk does not format well the first time, DOS will tell you by reporting the amount of space allocated to unusable areas. When complete, DOS will ask you if you want to format another disk. It's a good idea to format a whole box at once. If you are in the middle of a program and want to save something to a floppy disk, you must have a formatted disk ready. If we don't want to format any more disks, just type N for no, and we have finished formatting. Let's clear the screen and take a look at the disk. One way to see what is on the formatted disk in drive A is to go there and look. To change between disk drives, we merely type the letter of our destination drive and a colon. Let's try it. Type A colon and hit the return key. The prompt should now indicate we are on drive A. Now type D-I-R and press return. We can see that it is empty as expected. To return to the hard disk, we type C colon and hit the return key. Many times we want to transfer a file from our hard disk to another computer. To do this, we copy the file from our hard disk to a formatted floppy disk, K 
carry the floppy disk to the other machine and copy the file from the floppy to the other machine's hard disk. We have a file called autoexec bat in our root directory on drive C. To copy it to our floppy disk, we type copy C O P Y space C colon backslash autoexec period B A T space A colon backslash and press the enter key. DOS will report one file copy. Now, let's assume that we are at the other computer and the floppy has just been inserted into our drive A. To put the file from the floppy onto our hard disk in the root directory, we type C-O-P-Y space A colon backslash autoexec period B-A-T space C colon backslash and hit return. We could have omitted the last C colon backslash and DOS would have assumed that is where we wanted the file to go because that is where we were. The most important thing you can learn from this tape is that it is important to make a backup of your hard disk. A backup is merely a special kind of copy of the contents of your hard disk. There are many ways that you can lose the contents of your hard disk. That means that it is imperative that you have the information on another source so that the contents of the hard disk can be restored in the event of such a catastrophe. The frequency of making such backups depends on the value of the information that would be lost and the time cost of the backup process. If you believe your data is priceless and could not be easily replaced, you should be backing up every day. After you have made one backup of the complete hard disk, it may only be necessary to regularly back up the information that has changed each day. It takes a lot of floppy disks to hold the contents of the hard disk. If you have a 20 megabyte hard disk and are using double-sided, double-density 360K diskettes, and your hard disk is three quarters full, you may need 45 disks for a complete backup. The backup command is an external command. So we will type C colon space backslash DOS backslash backup space C colon space A colon space, forward slash S, and hit return. The C colon tells the computer what disk we want to back up. The A colon tells the computer where we want the information to be copied. As the program proceeds, you will be requested to insert a new floppy disk as each disk is filled up. You should number the disks because restoration of the information requires that the disks be used in the same order that they were created in the backup process. The command to reverse this process, should you need to, is restore. But you should check with a knowledgeable person before attempting to restore the backup disk to your hard disk. It could be possible that other, less drastic measures can be used to recover missing information. We will not present the details for the use of the restore command. If you feel that you need to use it, check your DOS manual for instructions. Many times you have information or programs on a floppy disk and you would like to make a copy of the entire floppy disk. You could, of course, copy each file from one floppy disk to another, one at a time. But DOS has provided a better way. We have both a floppy disk drive A and a drive B. Because the disk copy command is an external command, we type C colon backslash DOS backslash disk copy space A colon space 
B colon and enter. The contents of the disk in drive A will be copied to the disk in drive B in exactly the same order and format. Both drives must be capable of supporting the same type of disks. That is, you cannot use a high density floppy disk drive to copy a high density floppy disk to a low density drive. If you only have one disk drive, you can replace the B colon in the previous command with another A colon. In this case, you will be asked to place the source diskette in drive A and press return. Then DOS reads as much data from the disk as possible and prompts you to insert a target disk in drive A. Now it writes as much as it has read onto the target disk. You may have to swap the disk many times depending on how much memory your computer has. This tape is part of our complete line of videotape based computer training programs. Thank you for joining us via videotape in learning some of the fundamentals about DOS.